This still just says should start soon. Hold on. Holding. This is why drinks are always necessary. I mean, you know, once I had to re record. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook, are we? Are we? Live now. We're Hold here. On. We did it. We're here. I yeah, think so. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hi. All Hello. right. So we can't see everybody at the same time, I don't think. All right. So I'm not going to look at myself. Can you see? Can you, If anybody looks at their phone, can you see you? Can you yeah, see that? it's uh, delayed a little it's bit. It's just delayed, so. right? A little bit. Okay. There we go. All right. I'm not going to look at, yeah, if you look at all the things, it's bad. Just look at the Zoom. It's much easier. Perfect. <laughs> hey, everybody. All right. So we finally figured it out. You know, exactly. Oh, I think I have to do something. You have to like mute something. One of the things or else it's paused. Oh, yeah. There's definitely right. feedback. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. I'll. Yeah. Um, yeah. There has to be a way of probably muting her Facebook. It's very delayed. So. Should we should we delay? Uh, should we mute the Facebook and just keep yeah. on the Zoom? That work? Yeah. Hold on. Do we have to do that as well? Oh wow! It's really <laughs> mute your Zoom. Mute your Facebook. We okay. did. We. Yeah, I, I I got rid of it. Okay, great. All right, so we're probably five minutes behind to where you're seeing us. We're here. Okay. This is what it is. All right, so this is because this is 2020 and everything is fucking weird. Uh, <laughs> none of us were technology experts before this day began. And as brand ambassadors, we've all had to learn to become stars on Facebook and Zoom and all sorts of things we didn't have to do. All right, so before we go forward, I just want to introduce our guests. I don't think they need any introduction. Um, so if you're here, you know my name is Elaine Duff. Um, and uh, I wanted to put this together because I think brand ambassadors are the unsung heroes for, and probably the most misunderstood uh, role that the industry has because every role is different. Some people just think we're ahead with a credit card. Um, some people <laughs> just think, you know, uh, we drink and party. Some people have shitty jobs and all they have to do is really unrealistic KPIs and have to sell in more than they are possible with the budgets they're given. Um, so I just thought it'd be cool for all of us to talk about it, bring in different perspectives. So this is our first show, uh, and with me is the lovely Tracy Eden from Empress Gin and the very handsome Matt Roard. How do I pronounce your last name? Reardon. Reardon. Okay. From, uh, the Barking Iron. So I thought it'd be kind of fun uh, for us to start off with uh, just finding how, you know, a lot of people always ask us like, how did you get the job of being a brand ambassador? So uh, Tracy, I'm going to start with you because you work part-time as a brand ambassador and you work as a bartender. So how did Empress Gin find you? So uh, actually I was at the USBG meeting back in fall of 2017 where they launched in the US, uh, in New York, and at that meeting, and it was about a month before my wedding where I saw the brand, I saw how it was changing color, how it was purple, where my <laughs> wedding was completely purple. Purple's my favorite color, has always been. And as a, working with multiple brands, like working for different tequila companies, different uh, whiskey companies, especially being the bar manager at American Whiskey, I didn't have in my personal portfolio a gin and this gin just spoke to me as someone who comes from a performing arts background <laughs> and love purple I was, and love the taste. <laughs> I was just like, this is me in a bottle. I need to work for them. And I ended up getting a Facebook message on my honeymoon a couple of months later from Michael, my former boss being like, hey, uh, so we're looking for people for tastings and to create cocktails for it. And I've just did they know you beforehand? Like, had you uh, ever we knew each other when because he worked for Redemption, which uh, I knew from American Whiskey when he did a tasting. A and did you ever ask him, like, say, hey, if you're ever looking for somebody? Yep, I said at that meeting, I said, if you're ever looking for someone to do tastings or anything, like, I love this brand, it speaks to me, please let me be a part of this. And well, that's a big thing, right? So, just asking for what you want, right? So, this is like probably a lesson in life that everybody in the world should know. It's like, when you see something and you're like, wow, that really speaks to me, just putting it out there. Sometimes exactly. just putting it out there in the universe, yeah. it will deliver. It might not come right away, but sometimes like a exactly. year later, people like come. The worst you're going to get is no. 
Yeah. Or and that's not available. So for me, it was like, I knew it was a new brand. I knew it was just opening in the market in New York. I knew I wanted to be a part of it. What better to do than just speak up and say, I'm passionate about this. This, I feel like I can help grow in New York. And I'm still with them till today. And I've just grown with the company. I'm very thankful. So. That, that's fantastic. So, and how about you, Matt? How did you and Barking Irons come to be? Because you have a, definitely a different role. <laughs> yeah, I definitely yeah. do. Uh, so uh, a few years ago, I think this was about 2017-ish, uh, I was working at a bar called Plug Uglies on uh, 3rd Avenue between 20, 20th and 21st. Uh, Sounds so like a great dive bar. Uh, green oh, neighborhood was. bar. No great, food. Yeah, no food. Like the last of the regime. You didn't have to have food with yeah. yeah. so yeah. much. Don't um, you miss those bars? I just want to go in and drink whiskey at a bar. Oh, man. It, it was like, it was beers and shots and yep. vodka sodas on the weekends. It Brilliant. Was, we knew each other back and we had, uh, way prior yeah. to that. Uh, like I was, I went to performing arts college and I was an actor for a while. Okay. Um, but as and an Tracy, actor. you're an actress and a performer. I actually saw you sing recently on your YouTube videos. She's very good. You should definitely Google her. Her performance is spectacular. Carrie anyway, right sorry, we digress. Uh, so yeah, so in between, you know, of course, acting and, and bartending, because that's the acting way. Um, uh, I basically, uh, let me go back a little bit. Uh, Barking Irons is owned by uh, a creative agency called Night After Night. Uh, the two co-founders are uh, Casey McGrath and Elliot Fear. Mm -hmm. uh, they also do a lot of marketing for Jameson, uh, but then they created their own brand called Barking Irons. So segue into my into the bar I was working in, they were doing market research for uh, a couple different liquor brands. So they put me on camera and put a mic up on me and they were just talking about liquor trends that were going on. Fast forward about two and a half weeks later, I got an email about a sales position job. Uh, with parking iron so that was kind of <laughs> my little way into it you went from being on the camera to like do you want a sales job <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> uh pretty much uh and uh i met with elliot uh i think our first meeting was like three hours we just really headed off and um i i got to taste parking irons and i really really enjoyed the product i wasn't i'm not a big apple guy but which was crazy to me but you've uh, become the apple but guy because i have become the apple <laughs> you are now the apple guy yeah and uh, i just really love the story of barking irons how it's rich in new york history i'm from new york um and the creative department is phenomenal with the branding and everything so i just really really encompassed everything with it but um, it's a big jump to go to sales like did you hate it like this is a big thing like i hate selling like i'm good like i i'm I good at like the conversation <laughs> but i hate closing the deal so I, I i had no prior knowledge of what this industry was other than being behind the bar and serving beer and and shots, uh, you know, even, you know, being from, the, I worked in the clubs and the meatpacking district and a couple cocktail bars. But other than that, I was more focused on acting. So I just came in, made drinks and left. But now, you know, this whole industry is so beautiful and wonderful. And I finally got to, you know, when I came basically just a salesperson, but I also was the brand ambassador because I was right. the only one. So, <laughs> we're a very small company. Yeah. Uh, so we have our wonderful director of PR, Ashley, and then we have the two founders and me, and that's about it. So I was kind of thrusted into this position as a salesperson, but also doing the trainings, doing the programming, doing uh, off-premise, doing tastings, doing everything. Right. Basically, it was like, here you go, Matt, just figure it out. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, and competitions. Too. I did. Well, yeah. Fun. You also competed in one as well. I competed too. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you both come? You competed. Did you compete? No, I competed, you, you competed in the app. Ah, the Barking Irons. Oh, you ran yeah. a competition, which you should Yeah, yeah. Competed. Uh, we did actually five of them. Yeah. And that was They're my, very... that was like one of my like first starting things where I was like, let's do a bartending competition. Yeah. We could do a really small. I think we did the first one in Astoria, Queens. And it was really small and I was trying to figure things out. And then we did about five of them and got bigger and bigger every single time. Yeah. That's fantastic. And well, do you think, I mean, that's the, the benefit. Do you think that's probably one of the prime benefits for working with a small company rather than going to like a Bacardi or Diageo? Like the fact that you get to do everything. I mean, there's a plus and a minus, right? So what's the plus yeah, side? I, I ask myself that every day. <laughs> the budget is smaller, yeah. which is shocking. Um, you know, we're a uh, bargain is scrappy. We, uh, you know, I, you know, coming from the acting and bartending, and then I, I actually started a production company, theatrical production company, where I was producing off-Broadway and uh, shows. 
and I had to do everything low budget. So that was, I, that kind of really came in handy uh, yeah. with doing Barking Iron. So, you know, it was basically, hey, what can we do that has the biggest impact but for the lowest price? So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think that really kind of paid off a little bit, um, you know, as, as continuing uh, as we go today. Um, no, absolutely. And Tracy, I'm assuming the same. I mean, you were Empress Jen's not a very big company. No, we're not huge by any means. I mean, I know we're going to talk about like within quarantine, uh, yeah. it's grown tremendously. So we haven't had to put as much in. But I mean, my mom is known as the coupon queen. So like I am, <laughs> I, I've always known to like, if I can get something at a lower price, like let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm from a family of eight kids, so like I, I, I was born scrappy. Uh, that's just and and hardworking. So, do you think? I mean, now because you've worked for a small company, you've had to do every job, right? So you feel like working internally, you've had to be marketing, sales. Yeah, creative. I mean, for me, not as much. I've gotten, as I said, like through quarantine, because Empress is so visually uh, different and unique. Uh, they really pumped up the marketing and social media aspects of it that it's kind of sold itself like since especially obviously I'm seeing majority of things in New York and most like placements that I'm getting at this point a lot of them I haven't had to go in to initially get that start because they just like everybody's been stuck on their phone and yes. then they're scrolling on Instagram. And if they have things with cocktails going on, all those algorithms and stuff, then I'm just <laughs> pop, pop, and it's like, what oh, did you have to start cool. doing? Cause you told me you had to start doing videos and you know, yeah. that was you never did before. Well, you right. never did for the brand before. Exactly. Like prior, I, my job was primarily doing more sales stuff and getting those case placements, getting menu placements which wasn't initially my thing. I just have a lot of relationships in New York. So I think that that helped me. And also being the buyer at a bar prior, I knew both sides of the bar. I knew how like that kind of brain set works if I'm on that side or the other. So no, that, well, before we go into the Instagram, yeah, let's yeah. talk about that. We'll talk about the buyer thing because this is yeah. definitely, a, 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 definitely an issue. And Something one I know I struggle with because every buyer is different. Everyone has different quirks. Some are assholes. Some are really nice. Some want to work with you as a team. Like they do. Like so. Like being a buyer. Everyone's great. Yeah, everyone's great. <laughs> everyone, we love everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I mean, come on. We both oh, had the, we all had those instances where, like, and this is advice I'd always get the brand. They're like, oh my God, this person is so difficult. I'm like. There are a million, well, there was a million more accounts you could go to. Just don't deal with them because they're not going to be there in like a year. So just yeah. go to another buyer. Like I would tell my boss, I'm like, listen, it's not worth it. We could spend all the money in the world and he doesn't care. The next person that comes in with more money, we're out and they're in. So like, I'm not wasting my time here anymore. And, you know, and I feel like I'd have that conversation with guy I'd be like, you know what? Fuck you. I don't need to deal with you. I'm going out. Exactly. It's time management. For time sure, management. And dedicating your time wisely. And I think something that's we have a lot in common with our brands is that they're both super new, unique. Like especially yeah. mine being a naturally indigo gin, him being in New York and being like local to New York, I think is such a great aspect of it as well. And they're both delicious. Well, how do you get to know the buyer? Okay, so like if you've never been to an account, you have no connections there, and you're a new bar, you're a new brand ambassador, and you're like you know popping your head in. This is like we'll talk about normal times and COVID times, but like you know you're you're making friends. You you know you've done your research. You understand a little bit about the bar, right? Because you definitely should always do that. Right. You have to look yeah. at their menu prior and like know the program that they kind of have set and how you can figure out your way of maybe replacing in a drink or right. so. Also looking, you know, at their back bar and seeing what they have. I mean, yeah. if it's covered in Bacardi and Diageo products, yeah. most likely not going to happen as yeah. a craft brand. <laughs> it's, or, it's much harder. Uh, it's very much harder uh, to do that. I mean, but if you are planning to do that, look at also look at their menu and and see what kind of cocktails they're doing and have always those three in your head for those for that place. Uh, to be like just fire off to the buyer real quick but I right. mean getting, getting in front of the buyer is also another journey right yeah. so how do you finally get in front of that that's probably one of the hardest thing like yeah. making appointments is hard yeah for sure uh, I mean what's 
What's been what's some tricks you've used to like, you know, find a buyer's name and like make the appointment? <laughs> Honestly, sometimes sliding into the DM of the account on Instagram. That would work. Really? Yeah. Um, if you see their menu and like the cocktails that they're putting up and then doing a little bit of research, just that the person that's behind the Instagram account might not be their beverage director or whatever, but they might be able to then put you in touch with them and might just give you their phone number. Give that you is definitely number. something I've never thought of before. Matt, any, any, uh, I mean, when I first started, I really didn't know anyone. So I was pounding the pavement like crazy yep. and just going into every bar and just being like, here's my appetite. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I had been with him a time prior to ever being a brand ambassador, just a bartender, just to go and enjoy with him. So yeah. it's fully factual. So, witness. and then after that, that you know, that got uh, for time management's sake and just, uh, you know, walking five miles a day just is not. And then also cold calling, it's great, it's effective, but at the same time, it's you're, it's like one out of 10. Yeah. So, um, but we're used to the rejection from theater. So yeah, fine. we're used to that. That's fine. Same True, but you have to do that in the beginning, right? Like in the beginning, so yeah. you have your contacts, you know, but even when you get to know the buyer, so say you've made friends with the bartender, you finally get them to give you the name of the buyer and like, hey, you know, how's the best way for me to contact them? Or is there a specific day that he'll just take or right. they will take open tastings or um, yeah. To, to, and just like texting them, cold, like, hey, I was in the other day, you're bartender like do you just cold text them i wouldn't cold text no okay. but uh, email definitely morning. email yeah. um and then follow up after the email even if they didn't respond right. because i found that sometimes uh i'm guilt i was guilty of it as the buyer at american whiskey I, the amount of whiskeys that were contacting me it would become overwhelming and sometimes i just didn't have the budget to right. add more so i it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, it's like, and then if you walk into the place and you say, oh, I emailed you trying to find an appointment, sometimes they feel bad and they'll give you the time. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of guilt them yeah, you just a little guilt bit. Them a little bit. And, and <laughs> honestly, obviously we're in person, but we're not with you right now. But like being as theater people, like there's something about like that live visceral, like communication, like face to face experience that they can feel your energy and feel that you're passionate about what you're working for and that you're not an asshole and that you actually just like want to support them as much as they can su possibly support you. So sometimes actually being able to get in front of them is super duper important and gives it that, you know. Right. So just wandering I around the streets is usually not that effective. No, uh, I mean, it's good for building up information. It, oh, oh, I'm sorry, what was that? I'm, it's good for getting information, right? Yeah, so if you're just yeah. talking account, you're gathering information, intel. Right? Yeah, I, th I think after my first year and a half of Barking Irons, I had probably a half of a drawer filled with business cards. So many business cards. <laughs> so many business cards. Um, but on another note of trying to find the buyer's information is to go to other events of exactly of spirits like yeah. other events uh because mostly it's all trade uh for those events and they're going mm -hmm. to invite their best buyers to come out and drink um you know and also just support the other brands as well because you know if you're having an event you want them to come as well we're all a community and we yeah. want to help each other and i think Absolutely. the best way is is to build relationships and network and be out um, you know, for events, for other people, for other brands. Uh, no, absolutely. To being able to support each other. When, when I started, there was only six other brand ambassadors. That's how old I am. It was <laughs> like in 2005. And we, if one of us had a brand event, we all just started inviting each other because we're like, all right, there's only 10 cocktail accounts. So we're all going to the same places. So we might as well all just share the, like, you know, share the wealth and have a good time together um, because we're all talking to the same people. So we might as well just spend each other's money of and course, yeah right. um it that's that's been the most helpful for for me is, is, is to grow over but how do you know what they look like how well, do you know who they are when you go to the event oh uh, the buyers oh, no, no you you go well, talk to people and they, you get introduced introduced like a lot of times uh, you know? he'll be running like he needs to go support a certain account and you know buy a certain amount of drinks or whatnot so i might then show up and not trying to in any way impede on his uh, spend, but if he then introduces me to the bar manager or whoever yeah. the buyer, yeah. then they can, that he can say like, hey, this is my friend Tracy. She works for this awesome gin company. Like, 
she can also support you and do the same kind of thing. And then it's just that back and forth. Uh, no, I think that's a good point because you two have do something really unique. So you, you work for two different companies, you know, your friends, but you have managed to, and you work for small brands and you guys work together in, in a very interesting way to help each other get like menu placements and things like that. So yeah, we're actually know each other before. Yeah. We, we yeah. knew each other through mutual friends okay. um, and Brother theater. Jimmy's. And brother, when I bartended at Brother Jimmy's yeah. back in the day. Yeah, uh, Brother Jimmy's. Brother Jimmy's that part. up the street from Plug Ugly. Yeah, so, so we were we neighbors, all, yeah. boomerang, you know. Fair enough. Because bringing in a brand ambassador is lone, can be lonely. Like if you're just out and about, it can be really so, lonely. Yeah. Like it's like you're just out like going to bars because your friends can only come out with you so many times and like. Exactly. And I you call them my livers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I call <laughs> them my livers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, so you can only buy them so many drinks and you can only like, you know, sometimes they're like, oh, I just yeah. want to go to a bar and not have to move to six other bars. Um, so the fact that you can have somebody to go out with, uh, I think is good. Like, yeah, and we're both working. We're yeah. both and we're, you know, there are certain accounts that we've been able to both get separate menu placements or just case placement, or we've had times where he gets it because his uh, distributor is a little bit more independent and mine, they're like through COVID have not been ordering through. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, it all depends. Um, but the placements that we've gotten, especially in the cocktails together, like the one we're drinking right now. Actually, yeah, what are you drinking right now? Let's talk we're, about that. We're drinking a spin on a mule. Yeah. Uh, that uh, at uh, Lily's on Ninth Avenue. Yeah, in Hell's Lily's Crafts and Kitchen. Uh, hey, Jacob. Uh, another good friend of mine. <laughs> He's not watching this at all. <laughs> that out um, he's busy building an outdoor setup or something. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he has a cocktail called the Blue York Mule, yeah. which it's just a classic mule with barking irons. Uh, um, the 80 the, proof. Yes, the newer. Oh, nice. Yep, I've had that. Like. Very nice. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, layered with Empress on top. So it's visually stunning, but um, a really fun spin on the classic mule. So. Very nice. Yeah, very, very cool. So then up the street from there, we, we had just, a frozen drink. Yeah, we had a frozen drink yeah. at Whole Fast yeah. uh, on Restaurant Row on 46. And then they just uh, created a great cocktail called Temperature Check. Uh, that also, yeah. it's awesome. That has both of us with Rocky's Milk Punch yeah. and oh, uh, nice. some other, I think it's a uh, grapefruit yeah. soda. Um, and it has like a spicy uh, sugar rim on it. It's absolutely delicious so if you're on restaurant road definitely stop there yeah. um, it's just good to also hear that all these restaurants are open and doing business but also so when you guys do that do you have to like because your budgets are probably different you you're part-time you're full-time yes. so like is it going in there together and be like well i'm going to support this or like you know how, how do you do that so it's you know every every account is different yeah. um and i think if you approach it like that it's more of coming to the account and being like, what do you need? Right. You know, um, you know, we, we want to support and everything. We, we want to keep, we want to keep you in business and everything. Well, not us, but like, you know, the yeah, in general, right. in general. Um, so I think going at it carefully and then also coming up with ideas so they don't have to think about it. Mm. Coming up with the cocktails or coming yeah. up with the program so that they could just implement it and it's set. It's good. It's, it's less tedious work for them. We've done the tedious work for them. So right. sadly, you know, it's uh, most of the beverage directors or bar managers were sadly furloughed or, or let go. So now the owners are, are kind of taking the, the reins of everything, at least at a few places that we know. Yeah. Um, and they don't, might not have the, be the kind of cocktail background yeah. and knowing how to actually make a balanced cocktail or even knowing what kind of support they can get from brands. Sure even smaller ones like us. And that's why I think because we're such smaller brands and being able for both of our products to mix well together is a lot easier because we're able to split base in so many different variations sure. of classics. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'll be honest with you. you. You surprised me. I was like, I would never have thought of that. Like, you know, the apple and and, and the uh, the gin, but uh, yeah, I've had, I've tasted one or two of them and uh you you've had me take you've poured me one or two you brought me a sample once and they're really good so no i think it's a really unique i think it's a really cool unique way of helping uh an account out and and you're right because not every place is like is a cocktail bar we realize like 
the people who have serious cocktail people behind them is still only like 5% of the industry. Right. You know, it's still, if it's even that much, like it's still <laughs> really, really tiny. And the other part of the industry is like so many, I mean, granted it's changed a lot. There's still now yeah. people like fresh juice is normal. Right. Uh, you know, things like that, you know, like that's, yeah. you know, standard, you know, uh, and back in my day, I'd, I'd be like fresh juice. They're like, you're fucking crazy, bitch. We're not doing roses. Get the roses. You're a gun. Margarita, you're a roses. Guy. Yeah. So I was like, no, 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 you, this is roses. the new way. And they were like, no and i was like okay well we'll see won't we <laughs> no it's so true because it's it's such an expense and uh getting fresh juice but it's become so important people care about the quality of what they're consuming yeah. no absolutely ab absolutely um all right so what did i all right so now we're going to go into your instagram so we're going into oh, social media because um, it is something that has become extremely important so you know you both have theater backgrounds which probably helps a lot. Um, so your role, I know, you know, you went from a lot of, you're still doing product placements and menu placements, Tracy, but a lot yeah. of your role is transitioned into uh, doing, you know, I've watched some of your videos and your bloopers and they're very <laughs> funny. And now knowing your theater background, I'm like, oh my God, it makes so much sense. Like, it's like, you know, she's so, why is she so natural at this? I'm like, of course she is. Um, Cause it takes, not everybody can do it. <laughs> yeah. Not everybody can do it. It is something that is a unique skill. And I've, already, I've had people say to me, like when they've had to do live stuff or like on camera, they're like, wow, it's so much harder. I'm like, it is like camera work is hard. It's time consuming. It's hard, you know? Um, so that has become your main, like a lot of what you're doing for yeah. right so now. So I ended up getting a call. I want to say it was the day after it was, we were told lockdown in New York was happening from Peter Hunt, my master distiller at Empress, ends up calling me saying, you know, we know that you're not gonna be making the commissions because initially I was making commission off of placements, off of uh, either case or menu or bottle. And he knew that that wasn't gonna be happening at that point, but they thankfully valued me enough that wanted to find another way to keep me within the company. And it ended up propelling into me making a lot of classic cocktails using Empress. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, I come from the theater background. Mm -hmm. I used to, anybody that knows me from high school, college would like <laughs> edit together from sleep boy camp. I would just edit together. I'd film, document everything and put together these ridiculous random clip videos from certain trips I've gone on or this or that. So I actually come from, knowing a lot about video editing as well. So in doing that, now having this huge cocktail ability and knowledge, and then my acting ability or just being able to present myself, uh, just was a perfect marriage of all things that I know how to do. Um, and I've been so grateful to be able to do that through quarantine. And how long does a video take you to, cause it seems like, you know, it's like a five, a two minute video and it seems so easy, but it takes you, what, hours? It's so easy. No, it takes me probably like uh, an hour and an hour to two hours, depending on how many cocktails I have to make within the one, because you have to do your intros, you have to do your outros. There have been times I like to do camera magic stuff and enlist my husband to like take out a garnish and then all of a sudden a new garnish appears and it's magical. Um, <laughs> TV <laughs> magic. TV right. magic. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it takes depending about an hour to two hours or so, um, because I'm also perfectionist and want to make sure things are correct. Like this is all live and we can be fun and whatever, but it's, there's a different mindset when you know that it, you can then go back and do it again. Like I'll get a good take and be like, let me make sure I get one more good no, take. I, yeah. options. Um, so then that takes me longer. And how does that have to brand? Cause I know you said like these videos go, they're not just, they're not on your Facebook. Well, they are no. on your feed, but they go to the brand feed and it's, so, yeah. their, they, it's helped their audience build up by having you on their feed. How yeah, I mean, for sure. Like the, I think, as I said, like the visual, uh, uniqueness of, the color changing and it being a naturally indigo gin that changes to a more pinkish purple with acidity. Um, all of that on visually on Instagram and people just being stuck on their phones, people have seen it, but then everybody wanted to become an at-home bartender. And so making those videos has really helped people and 
Empress's Instagram account has doubled from this from March, like over doubled. It's that's it's amazing. Crazy. How, and our sales have still been like kind of at same points as they were last year when things were a hundred percent capacity and it's been more off-premise uh driven more recently because people are like let me just buy a bottle and make these drinks at home um because they want to stay quarantined totally understandable um but that has been something that has been to our advantage for sure um, no, i think and yeah. I'm, I'm, it sounds like you've been a huge part of that now matt have you guys had to do anything like that on barking orange yeah, actually, uh, yeah, <laughs> here's part of it. Uh, so about maybe a week after the shutdown, um, I was getting, uh, I was in a meeting with the director of PR. Um, oh, hang on. Yeah, uh, I'm drinking a Kapali. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to be my brand ambassador. So yes. I, I work <laughs> now as a uh, face of uh, Kapali as a global brand ambassador. So there, I'm drinking a nice daiquiri. There you go. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so uh, about, t about two weeks in, um, I was thinking about the bartending competitions and having bartenders, and I was like, how can we do that? So we came up with a series called Homebrew, uh, where I reached out to about 25 to 30 of bartenders that uh, have barking irons in their bars or their former bars. And I was, I would ship them a bottle. I say, hey, let's, why don't you film a video making bar a, a barking irons cocktail at home? And then basically we did, uh, we did almost two and a half two months of, yeah, it was of so content with amount. all different bartenders. Uh, we did it every day at one point. Wow. Uh, yeah. That got expensive. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, yeah. And then we did, uh, we did like- That was your budget for the year. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we did a Tuesday. Uh, but it was also, we released our 80 proof uh, unaged, which is in the Empress cocktail four days after shutdown. Yeah. So it was also a way wow. to get, you know, the word out of the 80 proof and also get into the bartender's and, fans. And it's advertising through people that actually are a part of the industry care about cocktails and that hopefully then their viewers also have are following them because they are looking for those kinds of, what's this fun new recipe? Sure. What's this fun new brand or spirit? No, so, absolutely. But it's also, you're supporting people. I'm, I'm assuming you're, you know, yeah. giving them a little With bit alcohol of alcohol like, and yes. So yeah. we, we wanted, it was kind of like a mm -hmm. full thing of like, how can we support the community? Yeah. How can we release a new product? And also how can, you know, we market, market our brand uh, during this crazy time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's a really hard time to launch a brand. <laughs> uh, or at least, at least it's like, oh, we have a product. Oh, you don't care. Yeah, new product. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then most, most recently, um, I think it's actually going live this Friday. Uh, we did something for Off Premise uh, for liquor stores. We went out and went to about seven different liquor stores, interviewed the owners, and then did, um, did a picture of their facade. Mm hmm. We're basically doing targeted delivery ads every Friday um, in lieu of like, because you can't do tastings anymore. So right. we decided to uh, basically shout out a liquor store and uh, run promoted ads on Instagram around surrounding that store on that Friday. Well, that's great. I mean, you have to probably do a few, you have to promote a few stores at the same time, if I remember correctly, like not to call you out on legal stuff, but... <laughs> there you go yeah just, just couple, go with that go, go with that yeah yeah but i think that's yeah so um, yeah so have you so off-premise has definitely become a new place where brand ambassadors didn't spend right. any time which i understand why because going into an off-premise account can be like just the most disheartening thing that's ever happened to you because like you only got some and so you understand them right so it's like there's a craft account and they're really into it and then you just meet the local guy and you know, he's like the corner store guy and he doesn't drink and he could care less about your brand. He's like, how much money are you going to give me? And what's right. your deal? Right. So it's like understanding that mindset of like how to sell to them a different way. It's like, how do we support you? Um, so is that the main thing? Like, was that some of the switches you had to make? Like suddenly doing off because off premise became so important. Like it's become, you know, that's where all the sales are going. Their sales are going through the roof. Right, they're you Obviously know people are buying it in volume of a full bottle as opposed yeah. to just buying two ounces that are in one cocktail. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so they're buying, you know, I buy everything by one point seven five milliliter jugs. <laughs> like, 
smart woman. That's yeah. budgeting. Yeah. That's budgeting because it's like, you know, we just, you know, we like our martinis here. So um, I know. For, 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 breaking, <laughs> for breaking our taste things were everything to us. Uh, okay. You know, and be, same with Empress. Yeah. People seeing the change of the color. It yeah. was like, oh, I'm going to put down this other clear gin and I'm going to buy this now. So. Yeah. Have you tried it? So, video, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, so explain. So, this is the first thing you guys tried was like featuring them. No, actually, during the home group series as well. So, on the end card, it would give uh, our wonderful production team would write out their, uh, their recipes and then uh, shout out to liquor stores with their ad. Oh great! From. So yeah. that was the that, that was, was during homebrew, really smart. Um, which I did a, always did a Manhattan store and a Brooklyn store. So I always shout out both of them at the end. Oh of it. yeah, no, that's smart. And, um, yeah. No, that's a big thing because I've also heard I don't know if anybody's done it like that. Uh, I, I a friend of mine was doing tastings, so some liquor stores were able to they had like video capabilities. So or you did a video capability in Zoom and they promoted it to all their like their mailing list. So they would host tastings. So they wouldn't require anybody to buy their brand, but just by doing the cocktails with their brand, they found people were buying it and then they managed to increase. And they just, they were able to support the count that way by just hosting these cocktail classes or wine tastings through like their Zoom. Like actual just, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, just because the count didn't have the capabilities and never did it before. So they were like, no, we'll host it. We'll do the entire thing for you. Just send this out to your mailing list, which I thought was kind of- yeah. Incredible. It's a uh, smart way because you know that the people that are getting those emails live close by. Yeah. So if they're like, oh, that sounds interesting. Let me get it delivered or go pick it up. So, <laughs> no, yeah. abso absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just realized my battery is dying. So I'm texting my husband to tell me to bring me my power. Cord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still at 51% on my computer. So we're good. We're good. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I just actually, I did a, 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 a store tasting, but it was virtual. Um, and what she does, uh, that's Square Wine in Long Island City. Uh, she'll basically you come in and you talk about the brand, you do two cocktails, she records it, and then she posts it up on her and sends it through her email blast as well. Nice. And I think she gives like a little discount code of like- Yeah, which, which makes sense. So I think everybody's becoming more creative and trying to find ways to support. And I think the off-premise has definitely become that avenue. We're like, we're like, I don't know anything about them, but I'm gonna find yeah. out. Cause there are the craft stores, there's a corner store, and then there's like the ones in between. As you said, like when you go into a bar, when you find a place that just has mass brands, Barking Irons is probably not the, the first thing or even maybe an Empress Gin. Same thing for a liquor store. You walk in, you're like, okay, there's nothing here of any craft at all. So it's like, I always tell people, I'm like, if you're a part-time brand ambassador, don't spend any time in that account. You're not going to win there. Just right. find the craft store. Um, you know, find and the person that, like, who cares. Yeah, that's more boutique and will actually be able to push your brand because yeah. they care about it as well. I mean, yeah. that's the crazy thing about the city. There's uh, so, so many, many liquor stores. And they're all independent. So many bars. That's uh, the hard thing. Like, so, when, yeah, like look, looking nationally, like yeah. there are places that, you know, you can get a 50K drop because they have yeah. all these total wines or whatever it is. But in New York, every place, it's you need to find that owner, find that buyer, it, because it's so independent. Yeah, no, they, they really are. It's such a, it's such a different world. <laughs> so now, all right, so what's probably the biggest challenge um, cause I know we've been talking for a while, so like, we'll wrap it up soon, but you know, COVID, right? So your roles have transitioned. You're talking about doing things online, you do more things. So what are the ways you found that you can support your accounts now based on what's happening? You know, they have different needs, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you. Lovely husband. Um, <laughs> 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 um, the, uh, um, you know, how have you found that you, you had it like, you know, the conversations you're had, like, what do, what do people need right now? Have you, have you found when you're going in? Like, you know, is it like just like somebody to listen to them because they're like in angst or like, I just need umbrellas. I need heaters. I need. It, it's, it's those things, but also I it, think it's solving problems for them. It's something that they don't want to do. You know, it's coming to the table when you come meet them and to say, you have all this on your plate. You have so much stuff. Like, how can we make things easier for you? Um, you know, it's, whether it be a menu plate, like just come up with a cocktail that's going to sell at your right. place and you, and, or, you know, we'll, we'll print menus or something right. or do a little a tops or something like that. Um, you know, events you can't do any, like right now. Yeah, it's uh, much harder. 
So, you know, it's even, it's even just showing up and just saying hello, like without even a business thing in, in, in general, mm -hmm. you know, just saying, hello, how are you? Like, I'm going to have, I'm going to have a drink and some food and be on my way and just say hello. Uh, it, it's that, that has gone the farthest uh, for, for me personally. And, and same, I think just them, those uh, places that have obviously all bars and restaurants in New York, it's been a struggle. And if they have built an outdoor setup, they've had to invest in doing that while they're not having much income in. Mm -hmm. So I think in being able to just physically show that you're taking out your time, which everybody's valuing time so much more now, which is great. Um, to just sit down and be like, Hey, I just want to come say hi, support you, give you, you know, like elbow pump <laughs> and or what, whatever, and show that like support. you care and yeah. that we care. We're there to support. Yes. We're buying a drink or two or seven and some food because <laughs> uh, you need the food, you need the food. Um, <laughs> but like Matt and I do it together all the time because then it, it's, able to either add an account that he's not in that I'm in or vice versa. We're able to possibly, if they are buying, if they're not buying and been sitting on inventory, you have to be understandable about mm -hmm. that. Of course. Like you're not going to be like, Oh, but you want to take in like $200 <laughs> worth of more product that you might have to sit on too. Like you don't want to ever do that to an account, but it's always important to value your product, know what you're able to give to that account if they might possibly be open to bring that in, knowing that they might run through it with split basing, if they already have Matt, split basing, putting me in it, might sell it more because it might become more Instagramable. Right, um, because the-, the, the, the uh, Or the now with fall, yes. him doing a more summery cocktail, but with apples that are more fall winter, he might be able to split base with another brand to, you know what I mean? Sure. So it's, it's just being smart about seeing what they have and not over pushing anything and knowing that we're all human and just want to support each other. I've also found that, you know, even as she said, it was, as she said, it was um, like, if you're going to account that already has a lot of stock with you, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, trying to figure out, okay, it's not going to do anything sitting on the shelf or in the basement. Right. So how can we figure out something that's going to be a product for you, which will make you money? Yeah. Um, what can I do for that? Yeah. So that's another kind of route that I've, I've had much success with in these times. Is there any example of like when somebody, if I, I don't know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you've ever had somebody be like, Hey, you're sitting on stock. This is what I can help to like, if you put this cocktail in the menu, yeah. like I just had it happen. I was up at a bar in the Bronx, uh, so you, which, uh, I went with my friend, Tommy Moriello, who works for Edrington. I saw on their menu looking um, prior that they had a lot of Rugal. So it was like, he must know he lives uh, more North. So he probably knows the account. He was like, the buyer's actually newer. So I've been meaning to go in there. We both went in. He said he was sitting on like three cases of McAllen. And I had seen that he just purchased a couple of cases of Empress. And so on the spot with Tommy, the two of us with the bartender did R and D when we were at dinner and came up with a cocktail called Empress Strikes Mac, instead of, <laughs> which is brilliant. And it was like an orja lemon sage Macallan, like so smoky, but Empress top, super Instagram bull. With Brugal. Not with Brugal, but with Macallan, which is also Edrington. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Macallan, which is okay. also a product, but Fair yeah, enough. like, just little things like that, that he was like, yeah, I'm sitting on all this. How do we do this? And both Tommy and I come from bartending backgrounds that were like, let's make this happen. And now a beauty, I think right now of, uh, with COVID is everybody's QR code for the most part. And you can edit your menu like that. Yeah. That's amazing. So that's been awesome. Instead of all these printed out menus. Yeah. But, I, I just did one in Hell's Kitchen. It was, uh, we had a beautiful cocktail on there and then they were doing hot drinks with a choice of like rum and whiskey. And then it just said rum and whiskey. And I said, hey, can we just add apple jack to that as well? Yeah. And <laughs> like, oh, that'd be great. Yeah. And, but then on to like, of like figuring out something easy to do uh, if they have a lot of stock and they're doing it old fashioned, right? Well, why don't we split base it and put an apple jack and do an American trilogy right there. There you go. So just having that, you know, just having that knowledge of being like, oh, okay, cool. like. You have a bunch of this product 
sell it and you'll make the money back. And then we could talk, you know. Yeah, we did it at Baylander when yeah. it started getting cold. I was bartending, uh, awesome boat um, on 125th. <laughs> Never been, I don't know what you're talking about. What, what's that? What's um, that place? I mean, till April, 2021. Can't wait. Yeah, there you um, go. But closer to the season, but as it was getting colder, we started having hot cider and then we were doing it with Matt's uh, drink and he was uh, with the Applejack and also he was in our frosé. So you wanted freezing, you wanted yeah, okay. hot, got there, it on the balls. There you go. Well, to these days it's been like 75 degrees outside. So I think at the end of the day, it's like sometimes thinking outside the box, thinking beyond your brand, right? So it's like thinking beyond your brand, how can you be a partner to them? Yeah. Sure. And like say, hey, Absolutely. we understand that you, you have other things. It's not just about us. If you sell, you make money, we make money. So let's try to find some way to do yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I've, well, Empress's whole, like, um, the botanicals all come from the teas at the Empress Hotel. So doing like hot toddy variations with tea has been my new, like, go in of being like, if you have a lighter tea, like chamomile or a, just a lighter herbal tea, green tea, you're still going to get the color of Empress, but you can make a hot variation with the gin, which using gin in a hot toddy variation isn't really looked at, but because our botanicals are so tea forward, mm -hmm. it blends beautifully. So that's been my kind of way of now getting into this colder weather and obviously your apple you can yeah out. yeah you can do apple cider all day <laughs> I, I i can't believe i forgot about the tea thing but see this is like also too with her and i are conversations yeah like i'm He's thinking, like she's thinking about ideas. tea and i'm like oh i just got into a place that has an entire tea room in their hotel and then they have a, like a speakeasy bar okay we're always good for brandon yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so then it's like you know it's, this is the kind of like relationship that we have where it's it's like show but we'll talk to each other and be like oh you'd actually be a great place that I just got into let me make an introduction right if I see any place that is like very locally driven I'm like Matt yeah get over here and he's the same when no which which is great I think yeah. because it's such a the brand ambassador role as we know it is unique everybody has their different goals and I think helping each other and it's such a great way of working together in oh, different sure. companies. Um, I will say, as I was laughing about Tiyashi, I'm like, I don't think we all work together that well. And we should have, but we, you know, and that could have just been me. <laughs> Maybe I, mean, I didn't I work that well. People, I don't know. A lot but, of people don't think to split base, like. No, split basing is, is essential. I think if you want to like, if, if somebody has like a really big brand on a menu, like, you know, say they have, you know, a bullet on the menu, you're like, I have my own whiskey, but like, so maybe I know you need to do business with the other, so maybe we just put one ounce of bullet and put one ounce of mine, you know, yeah. like you can still get their money, but you get a little of mine, you help me out. So All right, good. Because we're getting, we've been on for a while because it's 255, so we're going to wrap it up. Okay. I could talk to you two forever. <laughs> Same. Yeah, sure. I really could. So, um, so the final words of advice. So, if you have any words of advice for, a new brand ambassador they just got hired and it's like okay I, i'm just about to hit the streets is there anything you're like okay just make sure you don't do this and make sure you do do this you know i don't know matt yeah. i'm uh, going first yeah you're, you're go. going first Hi. um <laughs> i think what's important is uh making sure you get in front of the right people that if if you don't see them at that point you're leaving your card with that right person that it will hopefully get delivered to. Um, I think it's also super important to work for a brand you're passionate about. If yeah. you if you're going out and supporting and drinking that product, but you don't like it, that's hard to sell. Like as, that's someone coming with a BFA in mm. musical theater. <laughs> like <laughs> you, you can't act your way through not liking your brand. Yeah. So I think if you're passionate about the brand it's so much easier to sell it um but if you don't like your brands then good luck on the acting um yeah, but I, I agree yeah with that. i think i think it's just important to be yourself also at the end of the day like i feel like that's said that's so like stereotypical to say but you can relate to someone you can find that common ground of something that you both have in common that's gonna just like Make yep. it be like, oh, I need to carry your product because I want to see you in my bar supporting your brand. No, um, so it's in absolutely. a way selling yourself like we were doing as actors, just selling your performance. This is me just selling something that I'm passionate about. No, it, it, um, I think it's, it is key. Um, Matt, any words of advice? I agree 100%. 
Um, I would also <laughs> say that, you know, know your brand inside and out, yep. but also know your category. Yes. You know, know For sure. uh, the other brands that are going to have uh, uh, that are in your category and, and know a lot about it. Because the more you can talk about it and the more you're passionate about it, as Tracy said, mm -hmm. uh, it, the more it's going to be come off as that you are part of this brand. You know, as a brand ambassador, you are the face of the company. Yeah. Um, you know, or you yeah, I think that's great words of advice. It's like, it's if you're giving a training or if you're a brand owner, it's like, make sure your brand ambassador understands, like do the, allow them to go to other people's distilleries, allow them to get the training that they need so they understand that category. Cause somebody's going to ask you, yes. what's the difference in your product and this product? Yep. Yeah. Of course, it's uh, you're going to be compared to so many different brands. And I think why Matt and I work so well together is because our brands have no sense of competition between them, yeah. but but can collaborate so well together. Sure. Um, but even with other brands that are other gins or are other Apple Jacks or Brandies, it's it's OK to still have conversations because right. sometimes those two botanicals might work together or those two apple forms might work you know what i mean no it, I, absolutely, we're, absolutely we're all in the same yeah. boat we all want to succeed and if it means even collaborating on an exact level of something that people might think is competitive it might actually help to both uh brands advantage yeah no, I, I, go ahead matt you had one more last uh, you know i would mean, say yeah it's like play nice with everyone please. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know yeah. so, I, my motto is always don't be a dick yeah don't be a dick don't be a dick <laughs> uh, yeah uh, that's pretty be... much my motto my words of advice to most people is like just don't be a dick be and kind don't, don't be a lot dick. further in life yeah exactly <laughs> well this has been amazing so thank you guys both uh, so much this is the first of yeah. many of celebrating the brand ambassador um you know from the beverage uh, brand ambassador academy which will be coming soon but uh and Giuseppe, you finished it i there's still a little left in it <laughs> i know i have no more she's literally my work wife she's my literally she really is your work wife <laughs> um and uh which which is brilliant um because you guys do some great work together so <laughs> this has been amazing i think some people are going to get some great stuff out of this so be safe i look forward to seeing you soon and uh, Matt, I hope we'll see you out in a bar somewhere. You will. Yeah, probably, and I'll probably be with him. Yeah. So, fair enough. Yeah. We'll see you All right, bye, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here. Bye.